Welcome. It's going to be a great day. Welcome. Today we're going to talk about the transform tool. And the transform tool allows you to change the size, position, and rotate uh, any object on your canvas. Now here's the illustration that I did. And I'm going to show you how to create the background using the transformation tools. And that includes uh, stickers, layers, and even part of whatever object you've created on your screen and includes text as well. So choose a sticker spray to get some flowers for my background. Go up to the file menu to choose the transform tool. Click on the object and this menu will come up. Here we have the corner handles. You can click and drag these in and out to scale the object. What are called the normal or default transformations. Next, we're going to look at the outside corner handles. So click and drag just around the outside handles. And this will allow you to rotate it around the center point. And if you hold down the shift key, you can constrain the rotation to 15 degree increments. So I have to be within a certain distance for the rotation to work. Next, we're going to look at the edge handles. This allows you to scale horizontally and vertically. Now let's go into the inside area. Click and drag inside the transformation area to move the object. You can move it left, right, up and down, and diagonally. Now if you want to constrain the motion, hold down the shift key so it will only move in one direction. Now outside the area, if I right click, nothing happens. But if I right click inside the transformation area, I have a menu or different options I can choose. And they're pretty much the same options that we have on the menu to the right, which is rotation and flipping. So I can rotate it in any direction. Now, also, I uh, entered 100 to get this back to the same scale that I started with. So now we're going to talk about non-uniform transformations. And that will involve using one flower that we're going to do, because you can select one object. And you don't have to select a whole layer. So here, uh, I've scaled it up, rotated it, so I can do the same thing that we did before. So all those options are available. And click the check mark to accept any transformations. So here now you see the stickers back as a part of the other stickers. It's not isolated. Now let's talk about non-uniform transformations. Uh, this allows you to distort the object or to make it fit a certain perspective. And I can hold, click and drag a corner in any direction. So I can distort the object as much as I want just by using the corners. And click the check mark to accept if I want, or click the X to not accept. So I'm clicking X for now because I want to show you how all of these work, the difference between them. So I hold shift and drag the corner, and I can mirror the motion on the opposite side. Do it from the bottom left, and the bottom right responds, just as the bottom, just as the top left responded. Now, in order to use the perspective tool, I have to actually activate the perspective grid. So, but in this case, 
I can change the perspective to however I want to fit. I'm doing this by freehand. And because I know perspective, I kind of know how things should go to one vanishing point. So I could set this up to look like that. But I think it would be better if I had some rectangles uh, to show you because you really can't see the full effect uh, with these organic shapes. So let me just get some rectangular stripes here right now and then show you again. Okay, so now I'm moving this around before I start distorting it. So you can see this looks like a row of stripes, you know, going back in perspective, in depth, in space. So I can flip it. And rotate it in all angles. So I can do everything I can do with that. So let me go back now. You can see that this is scale with perspective is grayed out. No matter what I do on regular or distort, it's not accessible. That's because I have to use the perspective tool. So while content perspective is checked, I can't scale it into an actual perspective of a scene that I already have going. I could just eyeball it. So right now I'm just going to set this as my background and accept that transformation. So you see the original uh, marquee selection tool stays so you just have to click to get rid of that. Okay so now I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to use the perspective tool. Well, first, before I do that, I'm going to create some more stripes. Should have done it this way the first time. It's faster. And now, activate the perspective tool. Just one point perspective for now. That's all I need. And now you can see that scale with perspective automatically checked. And it scales to the floor, to the top. So I can accept that change. So I'm just control Z, go back to what I had, and I'm going to start again. So you see automatically goes to the closest perspective wall. So you can see I could rotate that, flip that, reverse it, well flip it, and now I can rotate it. And I can still move it on lawn to perspective plane to ground plane and I can flip it on the ground plane and reverse it on the ground plane also and rotate on the ground plane and you can see it goes back and forward in space so as it's closer it's larger so that's what scale with perspective does keeps the dimension to size So now I have the floor. Now what I'm trying to want to do is make this larger. Um, and the way to do that is how? Does anybody guess? I can use the handles because these handles are still active. I accepted to change and as you can see I made the perspective grid I've hidden that but even though it's hidden it's still there so this is still you can see everything is still checked even though scale with perspective is grayed out it's still checked off and I can still move this object along to different perspective planes well that's all for today if you've learned something today this has value to you please like share and comment I'd like to hear from you and subscribe so you don't miss an episode and remember just create.